Finally, God Eater is coming to, to Western yeah. audiences. It's been a long time, um, it, but it's been a, a huge success in Japan. How would you describe uh, the God Eater phenomenon in Japan? So, five years ago, we released the first God Eater game on PSP, and uh, after that, the phenomenon of God Eater has uh, you know, happened. Um, of course, people really liked the action. It, I mean, sorry, it just started as an action game, but uh, people liked the action element, and they liked the universe, they liked the characters, and that actually led uh, the phenomenon to go to the anime field. So, we have the new animation of God Eater being broadcasted already. So, that is the, um, you know, I would say the big God Eater phenomenon that I have s created from five years ago. Uh, that, that action game, that sort of cooperative, sort of monster-beating action game is, is huge in Japan. What, what do you think it is about that, that sort of game that, that appeals to the Japanese audiences? And, uh so, um, one of the biggest reasons for the success in Japan in regards to the um, success of hunting game in general is, um, I, would I would say it's a kind of co-op uh, gameplay of local connection, not the online connection. So that is something that caught the heart of Japanese fans. But, um, again, um, I'm, it's very interesting that the way that people play online is changing uh, from a from, uh, while ago. Because again, as explained, it started with a local connection gameplay. But now that, thanks to PlayStation 4, it's, it's more for online co-op gameplay. So that gives actually a different way of people to enjoy um, to co-op um, the gameplay. Spe speaking of that PlayStation 4, bringing it to PlayStation 4, of course, over here, uh, the Vita is not as popular, so maybe it's, it's a must to do that. Uh, what, what was the reasoning in uh, how you're bringing it out here in, in, in Europe? Mm -hmm. so, uh, actually, I decided um, to bring this IP not only actually PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4, but also PC Digital mainly for Steam. Uh, that's because not only for the multiplayer functions. Um, just to give you a background, a little bit of background story of how Japanese people play on the God Eater franchises. Of course, they play offline. I'm sorry, they, they play online, but of course, um, you'll be surprised how many people are actually playing solos. So, you know, there are many ways of enjoying uh, God Eater franchise as a gameplay um, and how to cooperate with others. So, um, you know, I just wanted to uh, bring um, this game and IPs on as many platforms as possible so that we can expand uh, the people to experience God Eater franchise. And of course, uh, we will be getting both games uh, in, in August. Um, can, what, what is it about, sort of, in terms of the story, and sort of how could you, how does these two games relate, and, and what's the storyline? And is it is it connected, or is it two separate stories? So, uh, those two games are actually connected in timelines. Gorilla 1 uh, Resurrection is taking place on 2071, and 2 Raised Burst is taking place in 2074, which is three years after the first one. So, you will see a lot of characters that are in common in between two games, um, so it's, it's really connected in terms of storyline. And this, this post-apocalyptic world that you've created, um, why did you choose that setting? What's, what's the sort of, why, why is it a good setting for this sort of game? So, in terms of the world setting, there are many, many possibilities, such as really, really old time or something like that. But um, one of my main concepts was to use something that, uh, that is very common to everyone, but I wanted to break it brutally so that um, people would feel, oh, this is something that I can share with my experience, but at the same time, oh, it's totally different from what I know. So, this um, image is something that this image is something that I wanted to give um, in regards to the world setting of God Eater. It, it's going to be interesting also that uh, players will get these the two first games at the same time because there has been, of course, an evolution from the first to the second game where you have evolved the gameplay. How would you describe the two in terms of the gameplay and, and what's evolved between the two and, and how are they different? 
On Glory to One uh, Resurrection, um, I wanted the player to, you know, uh, experience the basic gameplay of how Glory to works, um, such as sword action, gun action, shield action, and uh, devour actions. Um, on God Rage, um, oh sorry, God Raider Two Rage Burst. Um, on top of those basic movement and uh, actions on Gorilla 1, um, we added two more um, important features, uh, which are blood rage and blood uh, blood arts. Sorry. So um, those are something that you can strategize yourself during the gameplay to add more flavors depending on how you want to fight during the gameplay. So this is, I would say, one of the biggest evolution from the previous game. If you get to decide would you play tell, tell players to play uh, Resurrection first and then Rage Burst, or can you play it any way you want it, or maybe play Rage Burst first and then go to Resurrection? What, it, what would you suggest? Even though both of two games are designed that uh, you can play independently, but as explained previously, uh, these two games are connected in terms of storyline, so I would strongly suggest to play from the Gold on 1 Resurrection, then move on to uh, 2 Rage Burst. Uh, could you detail the work that has gone into sort of upgrading the game for PS4 and for PC? Obviously, they are a little bit more powerful than the PS Vita and the PSP. Uh, what, what kind of work has gone into that? Um, in, in regards to the very clear improvements that you can see from the previous um, hardware, would be the graphical improvement, of course. Um, since we're using um, PC Digital and uh, PlayStation 4, you will see how gorgeous it got be um, in terms of the, how it looks. But uh, in terms of gameplay, um, since um, I wanted to have the cross-gameplay function between PS4 and um, PS Vita, uh, in terms of the content of the gameplay stays the same uh, for both platforms. That's something that I really want to emphasize. I, I gotta ask you about the bracelet. It's very big, and I think everyone has seen it. Uh, can yeah, my watch? <laughs> yeah. w what is it? So um, this is a very symbolic uh, bracelet for any of the god eaters in the in the storyline, um, because um, again, you have to use a god arc, which is a weapon to fight against Aragami, and for you to be able to use god. God Ark, um, you have to actually imp implement the cells from uh, Aragamis into your body. So that um, bracelet is actually a symbol of uh, that operation has already been done to your body. So that's the very symbolic bracelet for any of the God Eaters in the storyline. To be very specific, uh, you can actually open the lid on the top, then that's where actually you inject the cells from Aragami that would enable you to use the God Ark to fight against them. Of course, we're just getting on the train now, our five years into the, the journey. Um, how would you see the future for the God Eater franchise as a whole? Uh, w what's next and, and how do you see it? So what I'm doing now, right now, is to bring out the games that we already released in Japan, just to catch everyone up onto the same level. But of course, even though I can't be really specific on what's coming next, but uh, my hope here is to bring out God Eater somehow to the people in all over the world simultaneously, if possible. So that is my goal for next step of the God Eater franchise. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.